Hey, it's Sam. Welcome back to the Just Grilling Outdoor Living channel. I have a Heston Outdoor Gas Grill with me, and today we're going to be talking about what makes this product top of the line. I won't spend too much time talking about the Heston Company, but before I get into the different features of the grill and what make these such top of the line products, I do just want to give a quick overview on the Heston Company. So it was founded by Stanley Chang, and that probably won't ring very many bells for you unless you're familiar with the nonstick cookware market. So he was one of the pioneers that invented a lot of the different types of technology that you use in nonstick cookware today. Fast forward all these many years later, he founds Heston, which is an American company. Their products are made in the US with commercial kitchens and chefs in mind. So everything is over-engineered for use in commercial applications and by top chefs, but they've compacted them into residential products. As I just said, Heston's an American company, so all the products are made in the US precision craftsmanship, laser cut steel in-house. The whole nine yards, they go the extra mile on their products. And you're gonna see that once we start diving into this grill here. I do also wanna tell you, this is a demo grill. It's three years old at least. It might even be four years old. So it's not gonna be pristine, but it's in pretty damn good shape for being that old of a grill and cooked on a bunch. I'm gonna start with the outside of the grill and then we'll work our way to the interior components. So the first thing when you're looking at a grill is you want quality construction. So what is quality construction? Well, 304 stainless steel is what you're looking for. 304 or 316, which is marine grade. Especially here in Florida, we deal with a salty environment. It doesn't matter where you are, it's just there's salt everywhere in the air. So the Heston grill is 304 stainless steel. The welds on this grill are some of the best welds I've ever seen on grills. As someone that looks at grills all day, I know. It might not make sense to you right now, but when you go to look at one of these in person, compare it to one of the lower end commercial grills available, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Lift the hood up, Anywhere that there's a weld point, it is very seamless on these grills, which is nice. You have clean, distinct lines. So that's one of the very first things that you'll notice about this grill, is that the attention to detail and precision craftsmanship is not lost. This might be the first thing that jumps out to everyone when they see the Heston grills, is the color control panels. So Heston grills come in 12 colors including stainless steel. You got red, yellow, green, blue, your common colors. The panels just add a nice touch and personalization to the grills. And in 2020, Heston made it to where you can change these panels out. You can start off with a certain color, and if you don't like that color, and you get bored of it, buy a new one, get a new color panel. You can change it out depending on what your mood is, so it's kind of nice that you can do that, and it's different. No other grills have that. And it's not an overbearing color to where, you know, the entire hood is that color and stuff. It's just along the control panel. So that's a nice feature. The next detail that Heston has is between the control panels, and if you have the cart model on the cart doors, the handle is also marquee accented, so they all match. So that's a nice feature that you have that's cohesive and consistent from hood to bottom, top to bottom. Underneath the control panel, you have a pull-out drip tray, which is pretty standard on most grills, but it's right here in the front, and it's easy to access. This won't apply if you're getting a built-in grill, but for the cart models, you have a couple different options in the carts, but they have soft closed doors and drawers, which is nice. If you're using LP gas, liquid propane, you have a pull out tank slider on the door side, which is super nice. It's an accessory that a lot of people don't 
add on that you can with other grill brands out there, but it's included with this and it really is such a nice accessory. Having to bend down, unhook the tank, hook your tank back up, it's just annoying and it's cumbersome. It's super easy with a slide out drawer like this. You just slide it back in. It just makes it that much better. And the other subtle feature that's nice is that the hinges on the carts are designed to be adjustable. So if your grill is sitting on an uneven patio, because not every pat, you know, most patios are not gonna be level. You know, they're angled so that way water and everything can flow away. So your door might look a little cockeyed. All you gotta do is just get a screwdriver out, a couple twists, and you can level it out. So it's nice that they do that versus other brands to where if you're on an uneven surface and the doors are sitting ajar, there's not really gonna be anything that you can do to fix it. So that's another nice feature. With the carts as well, you have two side shelves. The side shelves are nice and big. They run about the same exact depth as the grill itself. And then in the middle, you have these slatted grooves that are accented to match the hood handle and the control panel, which is nice because you have this nice cohesive look that accents the grill, but also matches. Moving inside the grill, this is kind of an exterior slash interior feature, and it's exclusive to Heston. On their hood, you can lift it and let it go. It'll stay in any position. For a gas grill, at least at the time of this video, Heston is the only gas grill that you can do this with. You don't have to either close the lid, hold the lid open, or leave it all the way open. You can just have it cracked a tiny little bit and it's gonna stay right there for you. That is a really nice feature that you don't have to worry about this hood slamming down or anything of that sort. And it's also very easy to lift. You can just use one finger and with a little bit of effort, you can lift it all the way up. You also have lights on the control panel that light up and accent the control knobs. And also on the hood, you have a built-in thermometer, nice built-in lid thermometer. When you open the hood, you have motion activated lights. They call them stadium lights in these grills because they're in the hood. And a lot of other grills and other top of the line grills as well, the lights are generally built into the back of the grill. They're not in the hood. So the reason that they put them in the hood is when the hood is all the way open, it's illuminating the cook surface right below it. So they're pointed straight down versus in the back of the grill, they're not really facing the grates. So it gives you a little bit better illumination at night with this. And you don't have to worry about turning them on and off because they're activated by opening and closing the hood. So you don't have to worry that you left the lights on. So that's a nice feature. The next thing and it's hiding in plain sight is the rotisserie. So the rotisserie motor is built into the housing. There's no rotisserie motor off to the left, off to the right of the grill. It's built in inside the hood, but what Heston does that nobody else does is gives you storage in plain sight. So the rotisserie rod, because everybody in their outdoor kitchens is just either putting it behind the grill or having to store it in a cabinet, you take the forks off and you can put it in a nice little cubby that they built inside the hood so you don't have to worry about where to put this big rod. So that's a nice subtle feature for these grills as well. The rotisserie burner is not in the rear of the grill like you would find in a lot of other grills. They put it on the roof. And there's another reason for why they did that. 
It doesn't make the rotisserie any more effective. It allows you to use the rotisserie as a broiler and a sear zone. You have a top warming rack that now can be used as a cooking rack that you typically cannot do in other gas grills. So the top warming rack, because you don't always need it and you don't always have to use it, and sometimes it's just in the way, they designed hooks on the back wall of the grill for it to tuck away and hang flat. So it takes up as little room as possible. When you're not using it, it's flat against the back wall. It's a great design. When you are using it, it's very easy. When you get it out, you have three adjustable heights that you can put it at. So when you're using that top shelf as a broiler or sear station for you, you can move it very close or a little bit further away from that infrared burner. And I should mention that infrared burner is variable from 12,000 to 18,000 BTUs. It doesn't get as hot as a dedicated sear burner. A sear burner can go up to 22,000 BTUs, so it has a little more power, a little more juice to it. But you're not very far off. And we're gonna show you in another video. So if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Us cooking top shelf searing and comparing it to a dedicated sear burner down below. The top shelf is also a laser cut grate. We haven't got to the main grates, but it's the same exact laser cut style as your main cooking grates. They're mirrored and flat, so it makes it very easy to clean them. Moving down to the main grates, just as the top shelf, these are laser cut diamond grates. They're very thick, very thick grates. They have a nice smooth surface and they're mirrored. So cleaning them, all you have to do is flip them over and you're cooking on the same exact side while the underside is burning off and cleaning itself. So they made these self-cleaning. These are very heavy duty grates. Underneath the grates are your ceramic briquette trays. A lot of manufacturers and different brands use ceramic briquette trays. They help keep the heat and disperse it evenly across the cooking surface. But not everybody makes their ceramic briquette trays reversible to where you can flip them over and use them on the same side. So just like the grates, how the grates are mirrored and make for easy cleaning, you can do the same thing with the briquette tray. So if you're gonna flip the grate over to clean it, flip your briquette tray at the same time and that way it can self-clean. So it's a very nice feature to be able to do that and maintain and take care of your grill. Going further underneath the briquette trays is you have your trellis burner. Most gas grills, when you look at them, are gonna have a U-shaped tubular burner. So Heston, rather than using what a lot of other manufacturers use, created their own burner, a trellis burner. The reason that they designed it this way is to give more heat coverage across the cooking surface versus the U shape. Their burner also is not 304 stainless steel, it's actually 321 stainless steel. The difference between 321 and 304 stainless steel is 321 is said to hold up better at higher heats. It's not gonna corrode as much so once you get over 400 degrees, really up to 1,000, 321 is supposed to perform better. So Heston has done independent tests and when they created this, found that 321 was better than 304, so that's why they went with that for their burner. Each burner is 25,000 BTUs. Now I don't like telling people and throwing around BTU numbers because most people are like, BTU, great. 
what does that really mean? The biggest takeaway from it is the higher it is, it doesn't always necessarily mean the better, but it has more power, more juice, and faster recovery times. So going back to a commercial appliance designed for at home, if you're churning out, having a cookout and things of that sort, the burner is gonna have such a fast recovery time compared to something that, let's say a Weber Genesis that has a 13,000 BTU burner. Using that burner comparison, you're basically getting one burner on this grill, the Heston grill, that has the same juice and power that two burners would on another. It doesn't mean that that other burner wouldn't get hot, but this is gonna do it better, it's gonna hold it better for you, and it take to adjustments much faster. The last feature inside the grill is the igniter, the ignition system. Most people are accustomed to the spark igniters. Now you push it in, hold the button, and click, 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 click until you have that big whoosh, and the tubular burner lights itself up. They do a glowing rod ignition inside here that heats up so you don't have that click, 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 and you don't have that massive when the burner lights up. That's it for the interior of the grill. Now we're gonna fire this up and we're gonna do some heat tests with it to show you how low you can go and how hot you can get. We're starting with the low heat setting for our infrared gun test. Our lid thermometer is just a little bit south of 300 degrees. When we open this up on the inside, I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna find, but I do think before we do this that it's gonna be hotter than what you would anticipate, and that's because of how powerful these burners are. So when you're wanting to do low heat on a grill of this stature, you're gonna wanna use one burner most likely. So starting over here on the left side, Yeah, that grate's running 410 degrees. Let's go to the middle. 415, so that's pretty even right there. And going back towards the rear. 330, so that's a pretty stark drop off there. On the right side, 340. In the middle. About 330. And in the rear, about 270. So it's pretty consistent back here between both sides. And then same with the middle and then the center. It's pretty consistent in the rear of the grill, the middle and the front, but it's hotter towards the front than it is as you get towards the rear. But like I suspected, on the higher end top of the line grills when you need that low heat, because these grills can go very low, you can't light every single burner. So that's a word of the wise, whether it's a Heston grill or a different grill. If you light every single burner that the grill has and set it to low, these burners are so hot and they're gonna get hot. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn off one of these burners actually. And I'm just gonna leave one burner on low and we'll see what the temperature inside the grill is. So we'll give it a little bit of time to adjust and come back down. And that will be the next thing we check with the infrared gun. For this low heat test, we are only using the left side burner on low heat. You saw how hot the grates were before using both burners on low. Over here on the right side is gonna be our indirect side with the burner off. So we're running about 260 degrees here in the front and about 260 in the middle. And moving to the back, we're running around 230. It's the same scenario as before, where we're hotter towards the front of the grill and cooler towards the rear. You can see that you can get lower temps, but it's hard to do when using all the burners, regardless of what setting they're on, especially on a smaller grill like this 30 inch. If you had a larger size like the 36 or 42 inch, there's more room needed to heat up 
so you'd have even lower temps at the grate, but with this being the smallest and not as much space to heat up, our test is gonna be skewed a little bit and it's gonna run a little bit hotter. Our last test is gonna be turning up both burners to high heat, so let's get this grill cranked up, give it 15 minutes to heat up and we'll check back. Back for our last infrared thermometer test, we've got both burners on high heat, so let's see how hot we are at the grates. Same style, going left to right. We're running about 590 here in the front. We're running 610, we'll call it, in the center. In the back, we are running about 440. Coming over here to the right side. We are running 660, we'll call it. In the middle, we're running six, we'll call it 662. And in the back where it's gonna be cooler, we're running about four, we'll call it 480. Just like on the low heat setting, on the high heat setting, it's a little bit cooler than in the back of the grill than it is in the front, and I think that has to do with the burner design. If you remember the trellis burners, they don't extend all the way to the very, very rear of the grill, so using this to check the reading in the very back, there's just not a flame right there that's giving it as direct heat as much of the grill is getting right here in the front. On the high heat setting, we're running pretty consistently from left to right. Obviously, it's just that front to back difference that we have, but we're running over 600, so that's great heat. That's what you want when you're doing steaks, anything, maybe tuna steaks as well, to get that nice sear without, if you don't have the sear burner. So it was nice to see that we had the consistency. Obviously, from front to back, you wish you had a little bit more, but every grill is not perfect, and you're gonna have nuances depending on the grill when it comes to temperature consistency. But overall, it's performed really well. You have a lot of control and you kind of know your baseline now of at the very minimum what you're working with for heat and what you're working with at the top. So you have such a wide range, which is good to see and that's what a grill of this stature is gonna give you the ability to go from near bottom to the top. So we're gonna close this up, shut this down, and we'll wrap up for you. From everything we've covered in this video, you can see why this is a top of the line cooking machine. Top to bottom, Heston's gone the extra mile on everything. We do our best to try and cover everything that we can in these videos, but sometimes we forget. So if you have a question about these grills, just leave it in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer it for you. We also have the Heston grill line on display in our designer showroom. So if you're in the Tampa Bay area, come and see us and we'll be glad to talk to you about these grills as well. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a thumbs up. If it was helpful, it helps us out a ton. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.